What is one of your favorite tips in order to get better sleep? One of my favorite tips for a great night's sleep is this idea that routine is absolutely queen. (laughs) And we're really not meant to keep different sleep schedules as human beings. Um, Falling asleep at 2 a.m. one night, 10 p.m. the next, understand how vitally important consistency is in our sleep routines because then our brain and our body starts to understand when it should be tired and, you know, prepare for sleep and when it should be awake. And then it allows ourselves to better organize ourselves and get a lot out of our sleep episode. The best sleep comes when we're getting consi- keeping our, our sleep times consistent. So falling asleep at the same time and waking up as close to the same time as possible. So is that takeaway number one, that mm-hmm. climbing into bed so you have a consistent time that you're signaling that you're going to start the process of falling asleep and having your alarm ring at roughly the same time? is one of the first things that we want to do. Absolutely. And I think we're slaves to our alarm clocks. <laughs> yes. But we don't really talk about the wind down time. It's kind of like a fuzzy idea, a fuzzy game plan. It's not a, okay, 1030 is when I'm going to start to power down. I'm going to get off my phone. I'm going to boil a cup of a small cup of tea, herbal tea, and then start my bedtime ritual and wind down routine, which is an essential part of sleep. We always think, you know, oh, you know, I now now it's time. Now 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 it feels pretty good for sleep, but it really it takes time. So you are a world renowned sleep researcher and scientist. What is your wind down routine? My wind down routine is one thing that I am very diligent about, and it's not complex, but I'm very diligent about the time. I do my best. You know, I try to get all my computer stuff done and then I put my boys to bed and then it's 8.30 and then I am switching my mindset and it's time for mama to go to bed. And and there are days where I need to be working and plug back in. But the best case scenario is my boys are down and then I do a couple, maybe I clean up a tiny bit around the house. I start to turn the lights off and then I go upstairs and I turn my phone off. I wash my face I take a shower and then I do one breathing exercise. I sit cross-legged on the ground in my bedroom. I'm turning lights off as I kind of move into the bedroom and I do one breathing exercise. And I don't set an alarm, but I just kind of do it until I feel like I've gotten rid of that busy mind, you know, that has served me so well over the course of the day. And sometimes that's five times on busier, more stressful days. Sometimes that's seven rounds of this. But it's the um, the military breathing technique. So I breathe in through my nose for a count of four. I hold for seven. And then I exhale, purse my lips for eight. And those times are longer than you think, right? The seven and the eight really like you're kind of fighting for the breath at the end. And that's the benefit of that technique. It restricts and restrains the breath and can help calm the heart rate and calm your mind. And now while I'm doing that, thoughts are flying in because of course of what I forgot to do or I need to do. And I come back to this idea of no, not now. Now is my time. I've done things for my students, my partner, my kids all day. And now is my time to restore and relax. And if anything, any thoughts are still fighting to the surface, I write those down at my nightstand. So I've done the 478 technique and then I mosey into my my bed. I read a couple pages in a book. I do uh, progressive muscle relaxation. I clench and release every muscle group starting in the from the toes and I inhale clench and then exhale release. And then I really kind of add on to that something, like something that I'm letting go, heaviness or a thought that's not serving me. And then I say a prayer and I go to sleep. And it doesn't happen every night, but that's my ritual. And I use the word ritual purposefully because you want to cultivate a ritual. A ritual is something you do every time. And so it's thoughtful. It's, you know, one, two, three, boom, sleep is next. Um, For you listening, what are the three things that you can do tonight and tomorrow night and really institute as your ritual that you can ideally also take on the road when you travel? And be diligent. Try to do those every single night because then what the brain starts to understand is what comes next to sleep. Hmm. Do you find that in your research that the people that are struggling the most with sleep don't have this wind down routine? They're not diligent about this ritual and the consistency of it and practicing these steps 
that help you fall asleep and stay asleep? It's a great question. I think it comes back to this idea that we're so used to getting, you know, what we wanted quick, you know, quickly, you know, whether it's our food or a coffee or, you know, getting a a subway or an Uber. We're used to things happening quickly when we want them to. And our brain is hardwired to crave consistency, to have, you know, to be able to expect what's to co- what's coming next mm-hmm. by keeping our schedules consistent, by giving our brain that sense of normalcy. And then sleep, you know, falling asleep faster into deeper sleep is more within our reach. Quick question. What is the average amount of time that it takes to fall asleep? Mm. And how, when should we get out of bed because it's not happening? This is a great question. And I think a big area to, you know, promote awareness about because we think that we just should be able to crawl into bed and flip our brains off like a switch. Wrong. Sleep is a process. And so falling asleep actually takes time and more than a lot of people realize. Even a healthy sleeper with no problems should take about 15 or 20 minutes to fall asleep. And that's countered. So many people will say, oh, you know, I I can fall asleep anywhere. As soon as I get into the airplane at Logan, I'm out. You know, I'm snoring before my husband's like that. Even the I literally, we, he hits the pillow and he's like, <laughs> and I'm like, so oh, God, now I've got to like, you know, try to fall asleep while you're already snoring. And so he just like drops in like mm-hmm. it's his job. And well, I might be a little sleep deprived. I'd love to talk to him and make sure he's getting enough sleep. But if you're able to fall asleep right away, it's generally a sign that you're not getting enough sleep. Really? Same thing. If you're starved for food and you sit down and you, you know, have a huge meal and keep eating and eating, it's probably because you're starved for for sleep because it's not, you know, of course, healthy to have enormous meals. Um, and so s- same thing with sleep. If you're starved for sleep, your brain is going to, you know, hopefully you're not in a place like driving a car um, or anything that would be safety critical. But if you're not getting enough sleep, sleep will come because it's a biological necessity. And so when we go without it, our body works desperately to get it. So 15 to 20 minutes. Mm-hmm. And that's both for when you climb in at your bedtime, when the bedtime wind down routine happens. And that's also how long it might take you to drift back to sleep if you do wake up in the middle of the night. These are such good questions. We just wrote a, a paper on how to help researchers kind of conceptualize these different steps because they're they're a couple, right? So right. Um, the time that you want to be winding down at night, maybe you're walking around your house, your lights are low, you're lighting candles, ideally. Oh my um, God, you know. I, that's not going on in my house. I'm like, <laughs> who didn't turn off the lights? Where are the dogs? Did you lock the doors? Like, it's like the <laughs> shutdown is happening. I need to like play some music and light some candles. Like, it is like, get through bed, people. <laughs> I love it. And I mean, you're not alone. So many of us, right? Especially with kids and, you know, other moving parts. Um, but, you know, f- finding ways to draw a little inspiration from these things, right? Look, I'm not saying let's all, you know, spend two hours in a candlelit environment before yeah, but bedtime. But I think this is really... What you're doing is you're taking a spotlight and you're highlighting something Mm -hmm. that is within your reach to do. And when you understand that it is coming from a world-renowned sleep scientist at Harvard, that thinking about the way you turn yourself down. So I, I think about, I turn down the house. We turn off all the lights. I love that. You lock the doors. The dogs run into their crates and get a little treat. You say goodnight to the kids. You make sure the cat's outside. Hold on. You this know all I, sounds wonderful, Belle. Well, I don't have any candles. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? But, I, but there is this signaling that happens. Exactly. And look, that's actually part of your wind down routine. And maybe as you do those things, you're consciously looking at it as that. You're maybe slowing down your breath. You know, when the dogs are out, you know, you're consciously not on your phone. You're starting to switch into a different mindset a one that's all about rest and recovery. And it's different than the daytime, right? The day is, you know, do, act, execute, you know, thinking. And maybe at nighttime you draw inspiration from some of the kind of meditation um, world of, you know, thoughts come into the mind and then come back to the breath, say, tomorrow. And if those are festering, those thoughts are festering, a great addition to your bedtime routine is writing down anything that's on your mind. 
so powerful because sometimes it's the stupidest little things that keep us awake. You know, oh, the dry cleaning, got to call mom, you know, take out the, take the dogs to the vet. And there are things that you can only do sometimes during, you know, work hours. And right. so writing them down can then, you know, I suggest a stack of note cards because then that can also be your to-do list. Those things that were bothering you that you need to do, they're now on a piece of paper and you can cross those off when you wake up. Oh, that's great. So you have a stack of like little five by seven note cards. And as you've got all those things that you'd normally ruminate about as you're mm -hmm. laying in bed and you can't fall asleep, dump them in their little mm -hmm. home and then you don't have to hold space in your brain. Exactly. And so it's you, so powerful. And then you start to condition your brain to think, not now. Now's, now's my time for sleep. Only one in three Americans make healthy, sufficient sleep a priority on a night-to-night -night basis. Anywhere between 20 and 50% of Americans struggle with one of two difficulties, and that's either struggling to fall asleep or maintain sleep 